Hey everybody, it's Tom, WA2IVD. We're going to do a short video today. We're going to talk about the noise blanker. My 7100 is installed in my truck, as you've seen in some other videos. There'll be some links to those in the description. And I have a diesel truck, so I didn't think that ignition noise was something I was going to have to worry about. Unfortunately, with modern diesel trucks, the fuel injectors are all electronically fired, and the noise that you get from the injectors is just about the same as what you get from ignition noise in a spark ignition vehicle. So, I'm going to be dealing with that anyway. Let's take a look. Anniversary of Shenandoah Caverns in Shenandoah County, Virginia, QRZ. The noise blanker function, if you're not familiar with it, is something that's on a lot of different radios. I'm showing you this on the 7100 today, but it does operate pretty similarly on other ICOM radios, Yaesu radios, Kenwood, pretty much any medium range and up HF radio will have a noise blanker function. It's abbreviated NB here on the 7300. It's a little button, it's actually an, a hard button, not a soft key, right near the bottom of the display here. And what the noise blanker does is it's very good at eliminating or at least significantly reducing pulse noise. Pulse noise is any kind of repetitive, uh, at a fairly consistent rate, uh, kind of noise, like spark ignition or, in the case of my diesel vehicle, the fuel injectors firing. And the way that a noise blanker works is it actually reduces the sensitivity of the receiver just for an instant at a very regular rate and it actually looks at the noise and it sees the pulse frequency and it kind of calibrates the the reduction in that sensitivity to match the frequency that the noise is coming in at and they can be quite effective so let's see how that works on the 7300 now i've got just a station here that's a special event that you can hear and if you, uh, if I turn this up a little bit for you, there's a lot of QSB on the band, but that's not noise, that's just fading in and out. The noise blanker you'll see is off right now. And uh, whether it's off, if I turn it on, you can tell it's on, there's a little NB that shows up on the display here. But you really don't hear any difference because there is no pulse noise. I don't have the engine running right now. So let me start this and then we'll take a look at what happens once the engine's running. All right, now that the engine's running, you can hear the pulse noise. And if I rev the engine, You can hear that the frequency of the noise is directly related to how fast the engine's going. So let's turn the noise blanker on and see what that does. You can see that the noise blanker it doesn't make it go completely away but it just about makes it go completely away. Yeah, let me turn my local volume down. I'll leave this so you can hear it, because I've got a separate recording of the audio here. So, let's try that one more time. I'm going to turn this off. And you notice you don't hear the noise quite so much on her signal. You still hear it but you don't hear it as much because her signal's pretty strong, so it's basically overriding the noise. And if I turn it on, it just about disappears. That's pretty much all you need to do to use the noise blanker. There are settings for it on the IEC 7100. If I press and hold the noise blanker button, it brings up noise blanker level and you can set it from zero up to a hundred percent and basically it's just how much suppression it tries to do 
And if you read the manual for most radios, it'll tell you you don't want to set it all the way up if you don't really have to because it can kind of distort stronger signals if you get a, a really strong uh, valid signal that you're trying to listen to and you have the noise blanker turned up all the way it can introduce a little bit of distortion into signals you're trying to listen to so essentially I'm gonna actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get back out of this let me just go find a quiet frequency and we can just do it on the static which of course, when you want to find a quiet frequency, you can. Um, let me get way away from her. All right, this is fairly quiet for the moment. So let me turn this back off. And now, and you can also see, by the way, the signal strength. Oh, sorry, I'm playing with my meter here, and I don't mean to. My signal strength, I've got about an S4 or an S5 on noise. And if I turn the noise blanker on, that drops basically down to S0. It just about completely eliminates it from the uh, S meter as well. So let's turn the noise blanker on again. And you see the noise goes completely away. Now, the settings on this, on the 7100, when I press and hold, I get noise blanker level. And you'll see there's a little up and down arrow here that takes you through several different settings. There's three different things you can set on the noise blanker. Noise blanker level is setting one. The noise blanker depth is setting two. And the noise blanker width is setting three. So if I go back, the level is essentially uh, how strong the, uh, the suppression is or uh, how, how much it is. And also, there's a DEF here, that's the default setting, so if I press and hold that, 50% is the default. We're going to leave it there for the moment. Depth is how deeply it cuts the, the receiver gain when the noise blanker hits uh, each time it blanks, essentially. And then the last one is the width, which is when it does blank, how long does it blank for? Does it blank for just a microsecond or a millisecond? And I don't know what the exact timings are, but it's, it changes the time period that it blanks. And obviously, if you make that too long, it's going to start blanking the actual signal that you want to hear. So you, gotta, you don't want to make this width any wider than it needs to be. And uh, again, the default setting for this is 50% or 50, I don't know if that's really a percentage. It does go from zero to 100, but you notice if I turn it down to one, you hear the noise again. So if I start bringing this up, at least with the noise in my truck, looks like about 40 pretty much cuts most of it off. And if I go to the depth, you hear more of it and you'll hear it sort of slowly go away as I bring it up and again five or six now you notice if I rev the engine six doesn't quite seem to be enough well, even with if I go even all the way up at 10 if I'm revving it when it's trying to accelerate I think the injectors fire a little longer or a little harder and you get more noise um, but and the default for this is eight. I'm gonna leave that at the default too. And then if you just press the noise blanker button, it takes you back out of that menu. Now, again, I said I'm doing this for the 7100, but if you've got any radio, most of them are gonna have a pretty similar set of options for the noise blanker. There's gonna be a level, usually a depth and a width that you can adjust. Um, and you just kind of need to play with it with whatever noise you're dealing with, whether it's ignition noise in a car. That's probably the most common thing to use a noise blanker on. But if you have some other kind of pulse noise at your base location, this can be very effective at getting rid of that as well. And as you can see, I mean, it just makes a substantial difference. So let's go back down here where we... Eh, somebody else. 
Um, well, there, so I don't know if you can hear this. There's a station that's very weak. And I can just about make him out. Whoop, wrong button. If I turn the noise blanker off, let's listen. That station is much harder to copy, almost impossible. And with the noise blanker on, you can just about... You can just about, even though he's not even moving the meter, you can just about pull him out with the noise blanker on. That's how the noise blanker can really help you if you've got weak signals and you've got some local noise that you're dealing with. If it's pulse noise, again, the noise blanker is very specific to repetitive pulse type noises. Other kinds of interference, it's not really going to help with. That's it. Hope this helps. Well, that's it for this time. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, I'd appreciate a click on the like button. If you find the channel useful, please consider subscribing. You can also click on the bell icon to be notified when new videos come out. In the description, you'll find a link to the companion website for this channel, along with links to a couple of other videos on mobile operation. As always, thanks for watching. I'm Tom, WA2IVD, and this is Ham Radio A to Z.